Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Mike Rainey. To my left, Cal Donjala. What's up, Mike? Great to see you, buddy. You too, man. Jake Matera. How are you, buddy? Yo, yo. Danny what Dubs. Up, How's it going, man? John, I don't even know where to start tonight, buddy. Um, difficult weekend. Um, Joe left the Impractical Jokers. He sure did. I'm sure it's temporary. Even Jordan retired three times, baby. He'll be back wearing the 4-5, and what, they'll be better than ever. What's the sketch version of the Wizards? <laughs> <laughs> the tenderloins he get traded to. Who knows, man? Fucking... May TV. <laughs> <laughs> The rubber chickens will probably have to do college for a while. <laughs> Man. Can you describe the feeling that you felt when you got that text? It was a crazy night. We had just left uh, the hibachi over here in Springfield. Oh, uh-huh. nice. And on 95 North, a guy with pretty decent traffic volume. I was going 80. This guy passed us weaving in and out of cars going 100. And t- 15 seconds later got into this huge accident oh, no. just, like spun this car around and like we had to pull over and like get a fucking old lady out of a car oh my god it was like what? smoking and shit was leaking jesus dude and i was like yo you gotta fucking get out of the car like it didn't look like it was gonna blow up but yeah everything in fucking movies and tv is like get him out of the car right yep. so i had to take his fucking mum mum that could barely fucking stand up jesus over to like the guardrail did she recognize you from the podcast <laughs> yeah she was like that guy was sure was a little stinker, wasn't he? <laughs> and like my my first thought when I pulled over was like the guy who caused the accident was right across the highway. Oh my god! And I really thought about going and fucking beating the shit out of him because of what he just did. But I was like, all right, we gotta we gotta get my mom out of the car first. The wife was in the front seat; she's fucking bleeding from the face. The guy's wife. Uh, in the car that got hit, it was a husband driving, wife in the passenger seat, and his mom in the back. Oh no. And the mom was like fucking, you know, she was crunched like, over. She might have been on that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> might have not she, just been an accident. Like, <laughs> seemed like they came from the fucking pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, and the cops came and I'm just like, oh is that God. guy going to the j- going to jail? And this lady's like, this happens all the time. Like basically being yeah. like, probably not. And like the cops never called Maggie after they gave her information. Oh no. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. And then I get home, and fucking. Oh Danny God. was the bearer of bad news on this one. Don't kill the messenger, I know. But, uh, yeah, I immediately stopped giving a fuck about that mum when I heard the news. Damn. <laughs> you went from impractical drivers to impractical jokers. I know. Dude, and on top of that, you were at Hibachi. Yeah, and so those, it started high. I, well, I was just going to yeah. say, like, I'm sure it ended on a low point because every one of those Hibachi chefs... Their goal is to push your wife to her sexual limits right in front of you. <laughs> and make you feel like a cuck in front of a family that you don't know. <laughs> was that the case here or was... Oh yeah, as soon as that fucking onion volcano started flaming up, man. <laughs> I had my mom and Dude. sisters in there too. It was embarrassing. <laughs> I'm like a Darius Slay when it comes to them throwing the shrimp across the table. I'm you intercepted. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> diving across the family. <laughs> Jake, you're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I ever go to a hibachi's, my first thought is something bad is going to happen after this. Because it's too good. It's too... Mm. You it know was so mean? good. It was yeah. the first time I've been there in a long time. Did you get the samurai? What does that what do you mean, mean, Jake? Oh, uh, y- Seriously? Is there like a specific guy that is a samurai at that location? No, no. <laughs> He'll cut your wife head off for like 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Cruise. He's the last samurai. Um, no, the samurai, it's like the special they have... It's steak, it's chicken, it's seafood. Whoa. It's everything they have. Are you making this up? No, dude. I dude, I I would love to go with you guys cuz sh- like, you know, I I haven't been in a long time. I'd love to go. Please let me go with you guys. Then we can hit my mom's <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in. I don't I probably haven't had the samurai cuz I don't really eat seafood that much. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm not a shrimp guy. No. I had an allergic reaction when I was 12 and I'm still being a bitch about it. <laughs> Same dude. <laughs> Really? Although, um, I think my allergic reaction. All right, I was I was a I was recruited to be a part of a group fight, and I was nervous about going to the fight the following like the night. Outsiders? Yeah, you yeah, dude. Because uh, one of my boys got jumped at a pool hall a few days prior. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so he they needed you. you. Yeah, and it would have been like five of us against like 
probably 30 dudes. I've recruited a crew to go gang fight somebody before. And it'll it's never works out evenly. So I was upset about that. And um, I, I told my mom I was having an allergic reaction. So they took me to the hospital and like there was nothing they could do for me. They're like, I, did he eat something weird? And it was like, yeah, I had seafood. They're like, oh, it might have been something in the seafood. I was like, yeah, I was also recently taking penicillin for a sickness. So that could have been that too. Huh. But it was all just because I was scared of fighting. So you lied about an allergy that you never had. I might not be allergic to shrimp. <laughs> so I don't know, but this all relates to like me being a bitch in eighth grade. <laughs> Let's order up a couple of EpiPens and have some shrimp cocktail one day. I'm, I'd be up for that. All right. Because I do like other fucking seafood. We'll just eat the fucking food outside of an urgent care center. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. That way, if we our eyes go all fucking hitch, we can I would do that make it, it to the door. It looks so good. I know. It smells good. I remember liking it when I was 12. It's free refills at urgent care too. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want the guy to put anything in my mom, in my my mom, my wife's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I don't want to put anything in my mom's mouth. Either. <laughs> like, can you just fucking feed us, dude? <laughs> why does my wife have to suck a shrimp? <laughs> I don't know why the guy was putting it through his fly. Yeah. That was what had then, me all fucked up. And then fake me out with the oil squirt. <laughs> Like, dude, you better fucking chill out. He fell out of the chair. <laughs> dude, you you are create turning me into an onion volcano. No. <laughs> chill out, bro. John, did you find uh, you found a quarter? Yeah. I, we, let's I, flip this thing and see if we're going to continue to talk about these guys. Dude, I am such a fucking moron. When you were looking for a corner, I took twelve steps into the next room and immediately forgot what I went in there for, <laughs> and then just came back in here. And heard you guys talking football, so I started talking football. Ah, uh, dude, the quarter's right here too. We got okay. two yeah, quarters, yeah. yeah. Dude, dude, regulation I, quarter. I might put one in like an emergency case on the wall, <laughs> like a fucking fire alarm. <laughs> I was gonna get one of those things that like uh, the people at the baseball game have. Yeah, yeah, like with the little dispensers. Yeah, oh hell yeah, <laughs> dude. I would say like maybe maybe this isn't. You know, you said he's gonna come back. I think he will. Um, this might just be a, a, a really mean punishment. Yeah. This does sound like he's just getting raked over the coals through the divorce, and I think maybe once he adjusts to divorce life, he's yeah. going to come back fucking firing. I'd say one season max. Mm-hmm. He's going to go play baseball for a year, <laughs> and then he'll be just back wearing the, the four foot. <laughs> in central Jersey. <laughs> All right. I'm going to flip this coin as a regulation quarter. Everybody knows we're not fucking cheating. This is honest. All right? If Jake, I, that's, that's known as Central Josie. <laughs> Go, buddy. Uh, if I win the toss, we'll continue to talk about the... I would be happy We'll to. throw on some bikinis, right. talk about the Jokers. Let's do it, man. And then if you win, we'll talk about a fucking serial killer or whatever. Okay. Here we go. God damn it. <sighs> I'm sorry, Maybe buddy. next week. I'm sorry, John. It's still going to be news next week. It will. <laughs> <laughs> Have you accessed the uh, divorce filings yet? I'll tell you what, man. You don't want to see how the sausage is made. Maggie's finding out a lot of shit no. that I don't want to hear about. Yeah. What's the worst thing that you found out so far? <sighs> that I am willing to repeat? Yes. <laughs> on the air? <laughs> um, The worst thing that I found out so far. I don't even want to make this public. I really don't. Maggie said that people say that... <laughs> Maggie said that people said... Maggie heard. Yeah. Maggie oh, read. It's all hearsay. That Q and Murr aren't even friends. What? Q didn't go to Murr's wedding. <gasps> oh no! What if Q was the one cheating on the wife was cheating on Joe with? Ooh, wow! Because not going to Murr's wedding is a big deal. Oh, John, man. Yeah, I'm so I know. Sorry, dude. You don't want to f- fucking find out how the sausage is made. Now I, now I finally know what that fucking phrase means. Great. Now we're gonna find out Sal's not Italian. <laughs> don't, tell her to stop. I, I did. I said, I said, bitch, stop. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is like spotlight. Like she's gonna start. Pe- executives dude. from True TV are gonna start threatening her. I'll tell you the other stuff after the podcast, and then uh, you can decide whether we discuss it in the future. You know what might make you, you feel better is just going to like a local grocery store and just clipping people with uh, <laughs> little, uh, just tossing pins. rolls of toilet paper yeah. into their cart from an yeah. aisle over. That'll cheer you up. Is there a twenty-four hour grocery around here? No, because I'm trying to get fucked up and go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, we're gonna try to smooth things over for you tonight. We got a good one. I 
take my mind off it, please. Dude, I had never even heard of this fucking guy until <gasps> this week. And man, oh man, super fucked up. He was known as the British Jeffrey Dahmer. This gentleman's name is Dennis Nielsen, hmm. also known as the Kindly Killer. Whoa, that's such a British nickname. It is. <laughs> yes, they would call they would call him Kindly because for many of his victims, he would treat them to dinner or beers before he killed them. Man or woman? All men. Really? It, yeah. Dennis Nielsen only killed men. Wow. Was he gay? He was. Okay. So it wasn't like, hey, I met a new friend. Let's go get beers together. It was a date. Yeah, it was always like, well, yeah, in this area, there were a lot of uh, what they were called rent boys, which were like young male escorts. So he would hit up a lot of those guys, but in a lot of cases, too, there would be tourists coming through North London Uh wanting to chill, get some pipe before they go back. and Catch the tube. (laughs) 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 Um, And it was similar to Dahmer. They would police just didn't give a fuck because up until like this these murders occurred from i think it was fucking 78 to 83 and up until 1967 it was a crime to engage in homosexual acts in the uk yeah huh 1967 was there was there like that in america until a certain time as well? No, I think like the, the tipping point was they saw Elton John in the duck outfit. <laughs> they were just like, all right, this is funny. Let's let him, let's see yeah. where, where this leads to. Maybe this isn't the worst thing this, in the world. This guy is the, where they came up with the, the phrase, take me to dinner first, right? It, went, it they, could possibly yeah, be you before you <laughs> fucking stick a knife up my ass. Oh, no. Guts. Do you think hibachi chefs do that to dudes too? <laughs> they just want to emasculate you. It doesn't matter who the fucking, who the object of it is. They're just like, all right, dude, we're, you just met this dude at a bar. Well, guess what? You're fucking toast because I'm going to have him sucking shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> you thought he's going to be sucking shrimp later? Sorry, pal. It's going to happen at the dinner table, too. <laughs> Rent boys is such a good oh, I love it. term. It Some is. British Oh, they slogan. knock it out of the park. Or Log- yeah. They really do. Logans, yeah. yes. Their Logans are great. British Logans are some of the best. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, he's actually a Scottish guy. And he ended up um, moving to... To uh, London at a mm-hmm. certain point, so he was born in uh, Fraserburgh, Scotland, in November twenty third, nineteen forty five. His dad was a Norwegian soldier, a guy by the name of Olaf, and his mom was named Elizabeth. And a funny aspect of their relationship was that his dad was in the army. He was a Norwegian soldier, and he was in their army, and he would uh, only show up to essentially pork his wife. She was down for it eventually, and they were... Oh, my God. Yeah. (laughs) Not at first? (laughs) (laughs) No, I should say... Well, yeah. So I I guess it, like... I don't know. Maybe the relationship took a little time to to come together. However, yeah, she was a willing participant throughout. So they were together from 1942 to 48, but he was never around to raise the kids. So there were three kids. It was Olaf with Olaf Jr., Dennis, our murderer, and his younger sister, Sylvia. So from 1942 to 48, he was just he was just gone, and he would just show up, pork the wife, leave, make a new kid, and after the third kid, she's like, "Nah, I know, I know this trick, Buster. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting me again." <laughs> and after that, uh, he never had a relationship with his dad. He did, however, connect with his grandfather Andrew, which was Elizabeth's father. Mm-hmm. Most of what I've seen about the grandfather Andrew are are overwhelmingly positive. Uh, attributes and really had a good relationship with him however it's different okay what were we gonna say the, no father figure to fuck him up the grandfather wasn't fucking him up but you were about to say but because yeah, well they lived in they eventually in fucking uh fraserburg it's a port town in northeast scotland so there's a lot of you know most of what they do there revolves around fishing and just going out on the fucking water to yeah. do all kinds of weird shit and the grandfather used to take him out to do all that so he Seemingly had a good father figure. However, fucking uh, Dennis Nielsen wrote an autobiography, and in it he describes, he he speaks glowingly of his grandfather. However, he also describes him as a tepid pedophile. Oh, shit. That's worse than an alcoholic, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Tepid is such a fucking weird adjective to put in front of pedophile. Right, because my, my interpretation of that is 
he might have given him weird feelings, but he didn't act on them. Uh huh. Because he speaks about him in in rave reviews in any other capacity, uh-huh. but it's a very strange thing to say about somebody. Yeah, and I wish he would have elaborated more upon that. Yeah, is it like he was waiting for me to give the signal that it was okay? You know, yeah, it's a, it's a fucking flash from the lighthouse. <laughs> But he loved him, and he, he viewed him as his father figure. Yeah. However, in 1951, Halloween 1951, the grandfather, Andrew, has a heart attack while he's out to sea. Was it, it a tepid heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> but he Seas has were a, tepid that day. He has a heart attack, and he fucking dies while he's out on the goddamn boat. Oh, man. And at this point, fucking Dennis, who preferred to be called Dez, by the way. Hmm. He hated the name Dennis. Dennis is six years old. He doesn't know yet that his grandfather is dead. One day, his fucking mom comes up to him crying, and she's like, do you want to see your grandfather? And he's like, yeah, I want to fucking see Pop-Pop. No shit. She leads him into the kitchen. They have the grandfather's body on the fucking kitchen table. And he can't process exactly, like, what's going on yet, but then eventually he realizes, like, oh, he's dead. But being a six-year-old child pr- trying to process death, it's like, okay, they might not be alive now, but at some point, they're right. going to come looks back. looks like he's fucking taking a nap on the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But he was dead dead. You think this is the origins of, uh, like, Puerto Rican dudes being in the corner of their own funeral? Dude, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to see Esteban, you walk in, he's playing cards. He's playing cards in a flat brim. <laughs> is he just holding a fish? Just from <laughs> that day. <laughs> The tepid thing is still bothering me. I looked up because I was like, do I know what tepid means? It means like lacking enthusiasm. Yeah, it's like, so it, I don't even want to molest he, you. Yeah, he's like <laughs> begrudgingly <laughs> molesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. He's like on his phone while he's like <laughs> jerking the kid <laughs> yeah. off. It's, yeah. It's like, pop, pop, you don't have to do this. Like you can watch contact? the game. <laughs> the strangest assessment of a pedophile, a alleged pedophile yeah. that I've ever heard. But there's no other instance or proof or... Uh, no, it was just... Of him with another child or minor or... I will say this. There's not. I will say this. One thing that I get, and there's a lot of different... There were a lot of different resources for Dennis Nielsen because he seemed to revel in being known for this. He really had a difficulty connecting with people, and this seemed like a way for, for him to connect to people, being known for this and having some kind of esteem now. Okay. Um. There were there were a lot of fucking books written about him. There were the one that he wrote his autobiography was History of a Drowning Boy. Um two that that I that I read for this was uh Boy Underwater, which if you're on fucking um Kindle, you can get that for free. It's oh, called cool. Boy Underwater and it's written by a lady named Rhiannon Diaverk. And then there's also a very funny one called A Thousand Dennis Nielsen Facts. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a good toilet book. Dude, it was. A thousand Dennis Nielsen facts to say at your next interview. (laughs) (laughs) That one is found exclusively on an app called Kobo. Oh, my God. You can only get it on an app nobody fucking heard of. Dude, it is a strange fucking book. However, there's a ton of funny shit in there. What's the app? Kobo. Oh, okay. Did you download the app to access this information? Yes, I did. (laughs) Yeah, Man, so Russian weird. Russian spies have all your stuff. <laughs> so whoever made Kobo dot com fucking also made up one thousand Dennis Nielsen <laughs> from, facts from the creators of Pedo. <laughs> but I, I will say this about a thousand Dennis Nielsen facts on Kobo. There was shit that I had learned from the other book that was listed in there too. Okay, so nothing seemed like oh come the fuck on right right right. It seems legit. So now that all these fucking Russians have six of my credit cards, <laughs> I believe it was worth it to learn these thousand Dennis Nielsen facts. <laughs> he's, um, so his grandfather's dead now, so he's just fucking all alone in the world. Within a couple years of his grandfather dying, he's hanging out at the harbor. Like, he'll just go to the harbor and watch ships leave and watch ships come back in. As like a 10 year old kid? Damn. Yeah, it's super yeah. fucking sad. Because it's clear that, like, his mom really didn't fuck with him much. His older brother would pick on him. His sister, he mentioned um, playing board games with her, but that was, like, the extent of their relationship. Olaf Jr. sounds like a bully. He does. Fucking, damn, Olaf's on my fucking shit again. He would refer to uh, to Dennis as a hen, which is a significant insult in the U.K. Yeah. Like a bitch. Damn. 
hen ass rent boy ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so shortly after like his grandfather dies while he's watching these ships take off, he falls into the water in the North Sea. He's drowning. Another kid comes to save him, pulls him out of the water, and saves his life. Jesus. Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. So that's where the drowning boy (laughs) thing comes from. Yeah. Yep. This kid that saves him, Dennis goes on to say that he believes this boy was attracted to him. I don't know why he thinks that. I'm thinking maybe because the kid had to resuscitate him. He misinterpreted that. It's like he's not kissing you. He's giving you mouth to mouth to bring you alive. I only say the lives of hot, hot people. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking squints ball doors. <laughs> was the, uh, the the kid who found him, was he a lifeguard? Jake, I swear to fucking God, dude. <laughs> he was near water. <laughs> Just I don't think I've ever regretted saying anything more <laughs> than saying that anybody who works near water is a lifeguard. <laughs> Dude, one dude, one dude messaged, messaged us. He's like, Mike, uh, I drive a tugboat. Does that make me a lifeguard? <laughs> <laughs> that so guy I'm fucking sorry, okay? I don't know everything about the fucking sea. <laughs> fucking drown me. <laughs> but shortly thereafter this, so he's saved by this kid who he thinks is in love with him. Turns out he's just giving him mouth to mouth. He's like, yeah, yeah, so he brings him back to life, and the dude's like, oh, gay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, he turned me over so he could probably look at my cheeks. It's like, no, he's trying to get water out of your fucking lungs, you moron. (coughs) Kind of sus, my dude. (laughs) Shortly after this, his mom gets remarried to some fucking dickhead. And he describes this guy as being super strict. Although he says he did admire his adherence to his own rules. During this point, he starts to realize he is gay. And I think he started to realize he's fucking gay after he got rescued. But during yeah. the course of, like, having to live with a new stepdad, it's, like, really, like, starting to hit him, like, damn, I might be gay. Yeah. One strange aspect of this is that he realizes that all the men that he's attracted to at least slightly resemble his sister. <laughs> <laughs> and even though he's getting bullied by his brother, his first gay liaison is molesting his older brother. Whoa. He said his brother uh, woke up while he was caressing him. Hmm. Which is uh, kind of a funny way to get back at a bully. (laughs) (laughs) He's kissing him on the forehead. (laughs) You're gay now. (laughs) It's like getting knighted. (laughs) You just smack your dick on each of his shoulders. It's like, I'm sorry. You're gay. Wake up. You're gay. So after he makes his older brother gay, (laughs) he joins the Army Cadet Force in 1959. He's 14. It's like the the junior ROTC. Okay. He's in that, and after he graduates high school, he ends up joining the British Army. So he joins the British Army, and he becomes uh, a cook. While he's in Germany, he gets stationed in Germany. While he's over there, he goes out partying with, with a dude one night, gets fucking blackout drunk. And he wakes up naked. I don't. Well, I shouldn't say naked. He wakes up next to this dude, and he's realizing, like, oh fuck, like anything could have happened to me while I was incapacitated, and I couldn't have done anything about that. The thought of that really turns him on. So incapacitation really plays a prominent role in all the shit he ends up going on to do. Hmm. I do have to backtrack for a second and say this: after his grandfather's death, one thing that he talked about doing as a child was standing naked in front of a mirror, dousing himself in powder, and putting makeup on his lips to turn them blue to mimic being dead. This Was, was this after Christ. the drowning incident or before? It, it was... Ooh, that's a good question, Jake. I don't know. Damn, I couldn't imagine walking in on my child doing that. <laughs> and then still having to be their parent. It's like, fuck. Dude. It's for school! <laughs> Because it sounds crazy, but, like, I'm trying to justify it in my head. I'm like, maybe, like, when he saw his grandfather laying on the table, mm-hmm. he was pale with blue lips. Yeah. yeah. And that's, like, his, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And, like, as we're going to find out the shit he did, you could see how the grandfather's death, like, plays into this. Yeah. Like, he- and very much like Dahmer, it's, like, him not wanting people to leave, him becoming detached from, like, the permanence of death. And feeling as though, like, even knowing they're dead, 
essentially trying to reanimate them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he wasn't trying to be a geisha in the mirror. He was definitely going <laughs> corpse. Were his feet bound? <laughs> <laughs> How many times would you have to clean the kitchen table after your dead pup-up was on it before you would eat off of it again? Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, there, there's something that I'm going to tell you in a few minutes that's related to that um, in regards to him doing disposing of body parts in a garden of the house where he lived. New occupants said that they use the, the garden to grow vegetables now. Oh, man. And he would fucking burn Dude. bodies in this fucking fire pit back there and then spread out the ashes. Oh, Is that good soil, though? Is that the, like, I mean, it's it could be, man. But, like, it's because it's decom- decomposition, right? Like, it's a uh, compost, sort of. Well, isn't that, like, what they say in regards to, like, making wine? Like, the name, the kind of wine indicates, like, where it's from and where the, what, the, what kind of soil is used. Because I was about to say, like, if they're making champagne here, like, yeah. this would put the pain in champagne, John. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Me, my, me myself, personally, as a person, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I think she, Woo! What's the douchey thing to say? Is like, champagne is French. Everything else is sparkling wine. Yes. So, like, only champagne is in France. I think specifically French wine is named after the region. Yeah. I think maybe Spain as well, but for uh, every other country, I believe, refers to the grape, not the region. Hmm. Like Bordeaux is from Bordeaux, France, but I'm not sure what kind of grapes they are. I worked sure at a restaurant, so I was gay for four years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's related to the soil, though. Um, What, French wine? Like the, the type of wine relates to the region and the soil used. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think... It's only for France, I think. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like Italian wine, I think, refers to the grape. I don't know. Like you're thinking like Napa Valley uses like... Yeah, like... Someone took a dirt nap. In like France. (laughs) Yes. In France, it's known as a Merlot, where in Italian, in Italy, it's known as a Merlot. <laughs> is that what you're saying, John? That's exactly what All I was right, trying well, to now say. Now I get it. <laughs> Sorry, I was t- my tongue was twisted there. Always get it thinking, out. Jake. <laughs> say what you want about me, but I am always thinking. <laughs> Mostly about a dog chasing its tail. <laughs> so he has his pass out fantasy, and now he's starting to get stationed around the world. And in 1967, he gets stationed in Yemen. Something very funny happens to him there. He has some kind of beef with a cab driver in Yemen. Mm-hmm. The guy knocks him out, locks him in the trunk of the cab. Oh, my God. <laughs> By the time the cab driver stops the cab to let him out to do whatever the fuck he was going to do with him at this point, it's not clear. Dennis Nielsen has regained his senses, and he comes out of the fucking trunk of the cab like a fucking house on fire. Like fucking Chang in The Hangover? Dude, he goes full fucking <laughs> ultimate warrior. <laughs> Little dick swinging around? <laughs> He attacks the cab driver and gets the upper hand on him. Whoa. And not only does he fucking knock out the cab driver, but he puts him in the trunk <laughs> and locks the trunk before taking off. Wow. Damn. Pretty wild shit, man. Yeah, that's impressive. It is. Mike, would you say that was a fair fight? I would, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I was I would even go so far as to say it's uber impressive. <laughs> Goes, he gets stationed back in Germany after being stationed in Yemen. He gets his first female hooker. What do you think he says about sleeping with a lady hooker? Ugh. Yeah, pussy, yucky. Yep. <laughs> he describes it as overrated and depressing. Is this was his uh, first true sexual experience? With like, a lady. Yeah. He'd already fucked dude, guys? It, actually, dude, it might be his first, like, wow. honest-to-goodness experience. Like, uh, coming with somebody else. Yes, yeah. Where did he say this? Did he have did he have a diary, like a diary of Frank? Frank. It was I mean, fact <laughs> five hundred. <laughs> diary of Man Frank. <laughs> Although I check check that um, he did do some gay stuff with a guy that he was um, in, I believe, boot camp with. Mm-hmm. So that was his first gay stuff. So mm-hmm. he he did have uh, meat activity. Okay. Is it knocking boot camp? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. It's, you know, that allowed me. Apologize. These are great. Don't they call the trunk of a car a boot? In? They do. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, give me a few minutes, and I'll come up with something about that. <laughs> uh, he establishes that he hates pussy, and 
not long after that, he's in the army until fucking. I 19- hate it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, no matter how you, what your sexual orientation is, man, pussy's like pizza. Like, <laughs> you could probably enjoy it at any time, yeah. even if you're full. You know, <laughs> throw it in the microwave. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 1972, he retires from the army, goes back home to fucking uh, Scotland. He's sitting home one night watching a, a uh, show about uh, gay rights with his family. Family's extremely homophobic. He ends up get, getting into a big fight with his brother who hates gay people. Probably because he was made gay in his sleep. <laughs> he was, dude. That'll yeah. do it to you, man. Dude, if it's it's like you think having a dick drawn on your face <laughs> while you're sleeping. <laughs> Try getting one traced. <laughs> <laughs> So he's still heated about having a dick traced on his face. <laughs> and during this argument, <laughs> during this argument, Dennis comes out of the closet to his yeah. family. So his family's just like, no way, dude. He's like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to London. He moves to London, starts a new career. What do you think he becomes? 1970s London. Mm-hmm. A cook? Uh, no, a new career. He becomes a Donald Duck outfit maker. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he becomes a beat bobby for the Metro Police. Oh. Mm-hmm. Carrying around the old club, yep. Billy Club. Yep. Wearing that stupid hat. Yep. Damn. Huh. Seems like you could get into some gay shit doing that. It is, dude. And here's the thing. He's only a cop for about a year. And it seems as though the breaking point where he realized, Jake, what are you about to say? <laughs> you think every time he went to take a lunch break, he just took the club out? I was like, lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> That's your third club this week. What are you doing with them? <laughs> <laughs> this one's coming out of your paycheck, yeah. Dennis. That's how you stop a riot in England is you just start sucking on your baton. Until <laughs> <laughs> tear, tear gas comes out. <laughs> All right, we don't even know what we're mad about anymore. <laughs> this, this, this cop just deep, deep throat at a fucking billy club. Yeah. But he's only a cop for like a year, and it seems as though the tipping point was while he's on the beat one night, he comes across a car where two dudes are getting it in. And professionally, he should cite them because you can't be doing that outside. Yeah. But he's just like, I can't. I don't have the heart to fucking let these guys not finish. So he's just like, all right, fuck it. Maybe being a cop isn't for me. He didn't like watch or like say, "Hey, I could bust you, but I won't if you let me watch." I swear, but I, I will you. bust. <laughs> yeah. He might have. I don't know. Someone's busted tonight. <laughs> that would be fun though. If like you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, and you look over and a cop's jerking off to you doing it. <laughs> so is that a British village person? <laughs> you shake up your spray paint cane like, oh fuck. <laughs> I don't really want to be a graffiti artist anymore. <laughs> He's the LNT. Hey, trace the stick. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right, dude, I'm not fucking being a cop anymore. He quits being a cop and he starts drinking heavily. He hangs out mostly at a place called the Colhern. The Colhern is um is a place where a lot of famous people ended up hanging out. A couple of the regulars there at the Colhern were uh Freddie Mercury and uh Sir Ian McKellen. He's gay as well, right? He is. Yeah. Yep. Also, I, I've kind of been picturing Freddie Mercury this whole time. Being gay? Yes. I hate to break <laughs> it to you, but yes, John. This, I have to go. Both had younger brothers who <laughs> who did it to them. <laughs> he also drank at a place called uh, Cricklewood Arms. What was that look for, Jake? Oh, no. I was just... No, sorry. But he, while drinking at a place called Cricklewood Arms... He meets a, a kid one night, a 14-year-old kid who was likely a rent boy, is hanging out at this bar, trying to get beer. They're like, piss off, kid. You know, yeah. you're fucking 14. <laughs> However, old fucking Dennis is trying to get his fucking bird wet. So he saddles up next to this kid, starts buying him beers, brings him back to his place. This is December 30th, 1978, um, shortly after I was born, by the way. Brings his kid back to back to his place, and while the kid's passed out, 
he gets a, a necktie. And this is how he kills a lot of victims. He'll put the tie around their neck, like mount them, and then just start choking the shit out of them. Whoa. He does that to Stephen Holmes. And while he's fucking tie choking him, he then grabs him, brings him over to the kitchen, and he's got a bucket of water. And just to make sure the kid's dead, he dunks his head in there and drowns him in a bucket of water. Okay, so this wasn't a heat of the moment. I was having sex with this kid. Now I'm killing him. It was planned that he was going to choke this kid. Well, he says that he briefly gives up drinking because he feels as though drinking forces him to kill pe- <laughs> kill people mm-hmm. and fucking choke them with his own tie. So initially, he attributes these murders to that. So it's not planned in the sense that like he's scheming to fucking, I guess, bring dudes back to murder them. I think he might not be aware that that's going to happen. Yeah. Because he doesn't do it to everybody. Like There are people that get out of there without being murdered. Mm-hmm. It's interesting he brings them to the kitchen to do the drowning. You know, because that's where, like where the grandfather was. When oh, he wow, and Jake. Saw the body. Yeah. So maybe he drowns him and he lays Puts him, him on the, the kitchen table. table. Yeah. Ah. Eats cereal off of him. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the case, Jake. I'm taking shots out of their belly button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, so he fucking, um, he strangles and he drowns this poor kid. Now, he lives on um, a bottom floor apartment. And after he does this, uh, he jerks off twice onto the body. Um, pulls up a few of the floorboards, and he puts the kid under the floorboards. Mm. That's gonna stink. Yeah. So this becomes standard procedure for uh, for a lot of the people he kills at this address, which is one ninety five Melrose Avenue in North London. Eight months later, the body's starting to stink. Now during this time, like they took eight months for it to actually fucking start. Like no, I mean it. It fucking it stinks before that. Yeah. He starts getting annoyed, like, he wants to keep these bodies. This is the first one, but he wants to start keeping these bodies preserved for as long as he can. Because one thing that he ends up doing is he'll pull the bodies up after a while and hang out with them. Like, he'll fucking... Decomposing bodies? Dude, it gets gross. He says, like, when he would decide to move a body from the floorboards to take them to the bonfire in the backyard was when it would get to the point where decomposition would advance to the point of maggots or flies or the odor would just become too overpowering. So he just set up like the Beetlejuice waiting room in his backyard (laughs) and roast marshmallows with these things. That's insane. Dude, and that was... um, Yeah, so that was his his first victim. Shortly, eight months later after that, there's um, a student from Hong Kong named Andrew Ho that he meets in a bar. He brings him back and he's doing all kinds of like weird fucked up shit to him, but Andrew's able to escape. He doesn't go to the police, though. All right, because he's just visiting from Hong Kong. Yeah. And he's like, wanna... I don't want to fucking deal with this. Yeah. This is the last fucking thing that I need. Police do become involved, I think, because um, they're aware of a disturbance, but he doesn't press charges. Mm-hmm. December 1979, uh, Kenneth Ockenden is the second victim. Now, this is where like he starts taking shit even further. He's a Canadian student. He invites him back. He's uh, Dennis Nielsen's super into music, so he invites Kenneth Ockenden to listen to music with him. He makes him put on like these fucking heavy duty headphones yeah, he that does. are connected to the stereo. Yeah. And while he's listening to this music, Dennis sneaks up behind him and wraps the cord around his neck and chokes him to the point of death. Damn. After he fucking kills fucking Kenneth Ockenden, takes him into the bathroom and he bathes the body. He starts getting in the habit of not only bathing the body but also shaving body hair off of them because he thinks like this is going to slow down the decomposition process oh, so he's a fucking idiot <laughs> what the fuck would that do uh, that's very hurtful because I I was like okay that sounds like a good, <laughs> good idea <laughs> that sounds like it would work yeah dude uh, he's probably a smart right, guy well thanks John I feel terrible now so that well, how second, would that work yeah that's... I don't know does, yeah I don't know I it might just be a sexual preference yeah. because everything mo- I, wish, I, should, I should say most of his victims were very young. I think the oldest victim was maybe 27, but the youngest was 14, and most of them were late teens, early 20s. Huh. So it just might have been like, all right, maybe he just likes twinks. Yeah. I don't know. 
was he using Manscaped at the time? <laughs> if he did it now, he would have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's a shame they didn't have Bluetooth headphones at the time this guy getting wrapped up by the cord. Was Led Zeppelin 4 out yet? <laughs> was he listening to something rocking? Yeah, that was out. Yeah, I oh, hope that's what I he was listening so. to. Jake, yeah. they probably had turning Bluetooth headphones at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, one especially fucked up aspect of this was uh, Kenneth Ockenden, he would parade him around the apartment. He would put his arm around his neck and he would walk around with him. The original fucking Bernie Lomac? Dog, he was weak in a Bernie scene with this motherfucker. Wow. He, I thought that was... Fu- I didn't think that was based on a true story, to be dude, honest. Dude, he would... Um, people became aware. Now, Kenneth Ockenden wasn't, like, you know, a rent boy where most people wouldn't notice if he was missing. Yeah. He was a Canadian student, so people were aware he was missing, and they knew that he went to this area of North London. Mm-hmm. So, it hit the news. He's watching the news one night with Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Ockenden's corpse, and they're watching the story about Kenneth Ockenden being missing. Jesus. So the corpse is watching his own story. Yeah. Fuck. It's kind of narcissistic, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a real dick. <laughs> After that, he puts him in the floorboards and repeats the process of just like, all right, when shit really starts to fucking stink, dude. then he'll take him out back. Does he rent or does he own? He rents, dude. He's not Jake, getting anything. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> Dude. All right, so in uh, May of 1980, uh, this, the next victim is a guy, Martin Duffy, and it's the same shit where he fucking strangles him. He's going to jerk off in the body. He's going to bathe it, and then, or no, he's going to bathe it, and then he's going to jerk off onto it, completely defeating the purpose. And it's the same shit where floorboards and going out back to the fucking uh, bonfire. In August of 1980, the apartment's really starting to fucking stink now. Because even though the bodies may not all be there, it's like you've done all this shit in this yeah. small apartment. And he doesn't seem like the kind of person that would clean up well after himself. And I'm just judging that by pictures of the crime scene after he was caught. Yeah. They go to his apartment and the place is a fucking mess. And it's just a studio apartment. Yeah. In 1981, he commits three murders still at this Melrose Avenue address. Uh, there's an there's an unidentified 18 year old. There's an unidentified 20 year old, and then there's a guy named Malcolm Barlow who's a 23 year old. He says that he stuffed his corpse because he was running out of floor space now because it's a studio apartment. Mm-hmm. Jesus, yeah, probably good for the winter though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he should fucking <laughs> Just schedule his murders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this guy uh, Malcolm Barlow, because he doesn't want to fucking dig up the floors again, he stores his body under the sink. There's you can't see the picture of it, but there's like a diagram of how he had him stuffed oh under my there. God. I fucking have to break his bones to fit him in there. Well, dude, one thing that he would do, I don't know how many victims he did this for, but one thing he would do, probably after watching the Marie Kondo Netflix thing, the Safe Space. <laughs> this does not bring me joy. <laughs> As he's cutting somebody's head off, I gotta get rid of this. This does not bring me joy. You know what? I don't even like this thing anymore. <laughs> Dude, he would cut off heads, oh. hands, and feet and boil them on the fucking stove. So if you think a decomposing body makes an apartment building smell that oh fucking bad, just yeah. imagine having a motherfucker living on the bottom floor boiling a head, feet, and hands. Dude. This is an apartment complex? It's an apartment, dude. Dude, the space out back was a shared space. It's the re- bonfire area? It's referred to as a garden. Shut up. It's referred to as a garden, but he kind of just made it just a fucking... A pit. I thought this guy had a fucking his own land yeah, that he was doing this on. Talk, but he he truly is renting an apartment. Well, that's what Dahmer had, right? His was in a, yeah. in an apartment. Yeah. yeah, and he lived in now similar to Dahmer. Wait, wait, what what year was Dahmer? Is this like parallel? No, he's referred to as the British Jeffrey Dahmer, although he came before Dahmer. Yeah. So this is early eighties. America number one, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Britain. You fucking red coat piece no, of shit. No, b- fucking b- before Dahmer. British Dahmer was first. I know. That's what I'm saying. America was second. But the name, it's named after the American killer. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. referred to as the American, even though he came after, all because right. America's number fucking one. Don't forget it. That's just so <laughs> you stupid Americans can, <laughs> can fathom the tepid serial killer. <laughs> I can't do action. So, um, after he kills Malcolm Barlow. That was a black guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a black guy being drowned by fucking Dennis Nielsen. Yes, that was a good one, Jake. Dude, after he kills Malcolm Barlow, 
uh, <laughs> the landlord contacts him and is like, all right, I'm going to make some renovations. He's like, Bam! <laughs> I'm busy. Like, maybe you yeah. might want to come back. So the land, he, he gets all the shit in order. He clears out all the fucking, any kind of indication that he was doing fucked up shit here. Except for the bodies under the floorboards? Yeah, he just puts a lampshade on the head. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually, he moves to a place called 23 Cranley Gardens. This The first place, Melrose Avenue, was ideal for fucking killing people, hiding them in the floorboards because shit came up pretty easy. He had an area out back to dispose of the bodies. I wouldn't have a fucking clue how to lift floorboards up. I wouldn't and either. make it look normal after. Well, I can show you that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one common thread in all these fucking people that we cover that go through, do shit with the bodies after they kill them is like, dude, it's so much fucking work to get rid of these fucking bodies. Yeah. I yeah. could not imagine murdering somebody. And, and then like, going for seconds. Yeah. 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 It's like Thanksgiving dinner. It's like, yeah, it fucking felt great eating, but now look at the fucking kitchen. Dude, yeah, it's like if you get like a, a thousand piece puzzle, you're just like halfway through, you're like, you know what, fuck this. Yeah. Now you got a, a victim, you're just like, this. I'm going to tear myself in. <laughs> He's just walking out back, weak in a burning a fucking headless corpse. And then the neighbor's like, uh, and he's just like, he had too much to drink. <laughs> Do like, you fuck think, this. I'm not cutting off head and yeah. <laughs> Do you think, like, in the apartment, like, I, I'm genuinely curious about this. Like, was it ever reported in the, any of the stuff you read where, like, he was, like, having conversations and hearing them, like, while they were under the floorboards? You know, like, if he's watching TV, there's three bodies under the floorboards. He would talk to them. Yeah. He wasn't hearing them, though. The, like, there was no delusion here. Okay. Like, he, he knew they were dead, but, like, he still just wanted their company. So, yeah. But it's like, dude, like... It, if you're cooking for them and you're treating them to drinks, you could probably get them to hang out with you for a while, dude. <laughs> Just like par- spring for a few fucking bar tabs. Yeah. And you'll get people to hang out with you. Do you think that was part of it? That he just couldn't make friends? So he was like... Dude, he said that being in jail was almost the relief. One, because he got all this shit off his chest. But two, he was finally able to socialize. Hmm. Like people were forced to be around him. Yeah. The crazy thing is, too, is like... The jobs that he would have, he worked as, like, uh, a civil servant, like, doing, like, processing, like, paperwork and shit like that mm-hmm. for the government. And coworkers seemed to have liked him. They said, like, one thing that was very funny that I got in my thousand facts about Dennis Nielsen book was a coworker said that, like, he would tell the same corny jokes over and over and over again. It's like, yes, I would love this dude. <laughs> dude, imagine being neighbors with him in jail and just being like, this fucking guy is so funny fucking annoying <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst part is that your jail or your fucking cellmate is bothering you I hate to be a bother but uh why did the chicken cross the road <laughs> were any of the facts in the thousand facts book like his favorite color was blue or like just dog shit yeah you could tell at a certain point like they probably <laughs> yeah, it probably could have kept it tight <laughs> could have kept it tight at about like 180 facts his oh. shoe size was a UK 10. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next fact, his shoe size in America was 12. <laughs> there is a lot of that. So it's oh. like, you, you can skim a little bit, but yeah. some of the shit is, is worth finding. And I felt, felt like the corny joke one was one of those. Oh, dude, one thing that I forgot to mention was, uh, fuck, what was this guy's name? Fuck, I can't remember. He had a boyfriend at one point. God damn it, I'm a moron. You think in while you think of that, I'm gonna ask John. Do you think in prison, like he would just like have the same routine jokes? Like he'd get the prison gruel, be like, ah, just like Mama used to. Oh make. yeah, dude. Just like when yeah. you work with a fucking guy for ten <laughs> years, and it's like Jesus yeah. Christ, I can't wait for you to die so I don't have to <laughs> hear that fucking joke again. At one point, he had a boyfriend. The guy's name was David Galishon. He had a long-term boyfriend, and for the most part, he treated this guy well. In prison? No. Okay. At this fucking um, 195 Melrose Avenue okay. address. So would he bring him over? He had, they lit, Well, this was before the murders. I should have oh, mentioned okay. this earlier. I apologize. But oh, this guy, okay. David Galishan, was his long-term boyfriend, and um, they had a dog together. To, oh, wait. They had nicknames for each other. So David was Twinkle, and... <laughs> And Dennis was Dez. So Twinkle and Dez okay. were living together, and they had a dog named Bleep. Huh. And this was before the murder. So it's like not every time he would go to get a trash bag under the sink, there wasn't like yeah, a body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was before all the murders. Okay. All right. So he moves into Cranley Gardens. Now, 
this is not a place where you should be able to kill people. Yeah, it, this all sounds so regal. Like Cranley Gardens sounds like it's a shit surrounded hole. by flowers. Oh, really, dude? It is. So this this fucking apartment at uh, Cranley Gardens, it's an attic flat, mm-hmm. and it's you might be able to pit, fit like if you had a party there, you couldn't fit any more than ten people mm-hmm. at the same time. And uh, there's pictures of this shit online. I'll put them up here um, when the video's edited. In this place, so it's an attic, so you gotta, you can't dispose of it. You can't, like, put shit under the floorboards because yeah. it's going to go into your fucking neighbor's apartment. It's going to drop a dead body down there. And, Can uh, I borrow some sugar? <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's two people right off the bat that he almost kills, but they escape. So already it's fucking difficult. It's like the universe telling him, like, dude, you got to fucking chill with this killing shit. Yeah. It's not going to fucking happen here. March of 82, he gets into a fight with a guy named John Howlett. And it's the same shit where he's going to try to strangle him in the hopes of, like, then drowning this them. This is in the apartment? This is in the apartment. Yeah. So while he sh- uh, he's fighting this guy, he's strangle him, strangling him, and he brings him over to the tub. The guy starts fighting back. And the guy almost gets the upper hand on him, according to Dennis. But Dennis is able to overpower him. And he kills him. Dismembers the body. But he doesn't have the same resources that he had at the previous mm-hmm. place at Melrose Avenue. So it's like, fuck, I can't put him under the floorboards. Yeah. I don't have a garden to take him out back and burn this guy. So what the fuck am I going to do with him? What do you think he does with him to get rid of the body? Chop him up. Chops him up. What's next? Eats him. No. He chops him up small enough as to where he flushes him down the toilet. Oh, my God. I was going to say garbage disposal. Dude. Whew. So he's flushing his victim's remains down the toilet. That's gonna cause a that's gonna cause a clog. It does. In it. And he kills the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> so he's flushing uh the flesh down the toilet and as he can't flush the bones. The bones he puts in the trash. <laughs> Any of the big bones he does. Now all right, I'll save this for when they, they find out the plumbing's yeah, getting he's backed got, up. He's got a something's gonna happen with the head. The plumbing's getting backed up at some point. In uh, May of ni- 1982, he brings a guy back named Carl Stoddard. It's a 20 on- 21-year-old guy, just handsome guy. He's hanging out with at the bar. Um, I don't know if he was a rent boy or not, but just seemed like a nice fella. He came back, had some drinks. While he's there, he tries the same shit where he's strangling him, and he's also drowning him. The strangling starts to happen in Carl's sleeping bag that he brings to the apartment. So while he's sleeping in the sleeping bag, fucking Dennis tries to fucking strangle him to death. What a nightmare. It he's is. zipped up in a fucking bag. Yeah. Getting strangled. Well, dude, he, he's strangling him in this fucking sleeping bag. He thinks he did the job, and then he unzips him and brings him into the bathroom to fucking drown him. But while he's drowning, the guy's fighting back, and then the guy loses consciousness. So he's like, thank God, this guy's fucking finally dead. And he faked it. He didn't fake it. Okay. He, he just wasn't fucking dead. Yeah. Dennis brings him out to the living room and sets him in a fucking chair, just like I'm sitting in. Yeah. Watching TV with what he perceives to be a corpse, but it's just an unconscious man who was just nearly drowned to death. Yeah. Can't tell that he's breathing or anything. Just barely breathing, but yeah. it's, it's, it's imperceptible. The way that he knows that uh, Carl's still alive is the dog Bleep uh, runs over, hops up on the armchair, and starts licking Carl's face. And that wakes him up? It not only starts to wake him up, but it alerts fucking Dennis. It's like, oh, this fucking dog never does it to any of my other corpses. What's going on here? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, thank God that dog has some fucking manners and he's not <laughs> licking these corpses. My, I've always had a, uh, a, a imagine, like a daydream when I watch a movie and somebody's being like strangled or drowned. Mm-hmm. That you just go limp before you actually die. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of fighting. Yep. So they would let go of you. Mm-hmm. And then you could, ha, ah, psych, motherfucker. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then. I try that a lot during th- sex. <laughs> like, I go, dude, I go limp constantly. And my wife's like, all right, I guess we're done. I'm just like, nope. Actually, yes. That was done 10 minutes ago. <laughs> dude. So I'm literally drowning in pussy. You know what? I, if I was him, my joke for all the corpses. Would be when I'm just watching TV with them. Would be like, 
You're not even watching. <laughs> <laughs> Just arguing about what you went to eat tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking tired of this. <laughs> so this dude comes back comes back to life and he starts becoming conscious and while he was drowning him, the guy's saying, Please stop, please don't do this to me. But he's not But it's like <laughs> <laughs> But, dude, after Bleep licks this guy's face, the guy starts coming, too, and Dennis starts to feel bad for some reason. What a pleasant way to be brought back to life. Yeah. Just the fucking dog yeah. licking your face. Yeah. And you're like, oh, my God, I thought I fucking drowned. Dude, dude. even better, what if, like, Dennis put peanut butter on his dick? <laughs> <laughs> the dog was licking the peanut butter off. It's just like, oh, my God, I thought I was dead. I thought I was drowning. It turns off I'm just getting a blowjob from a fucking border collie. Is up. this heaven? <laughs> Oh no, it's just having a hell. <laughs> so uh he fucking <laughs> dude Carl goes to Dennis, he's like, What is going on? He's like, I felt like I was drowning. He's like, No, you were just stuck in your sleeping bag. <laughs> Whoa. What? And um the next the following day, like this might have been like late at night where this happened, but the following day, like Carl is with it enough to like be able to leave mm -hmm. under his own power. So he's just like, all right, I'm going to fucking hit the road. All and the oxygen came back to his brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Danny watches it or Dennis watches it happen. Yeah. He lets him go. Okay. For some reason, like he just does, does not want to finish fucking killing this guy. I mean, dude, that's like a pretty impressive mm -hmm. thing. Like that guy earned his fucking life back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah, maybe this one, yeah. maybe this one deserves yeah. to live. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy that. So, through all these murders, the dog is in the apartment. Because when you think, like, if you ever gotten, like, a scuffle with anybody with a dog around... Yeah, the they just shut their up. Their yeah. fucking... Their goddamn head off. Dog was probably fucked up, too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they called him Bleep because he was out of his bleeping mind, John. Do you think he was know. feeding... <laughs> 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 Do you think they were... F he was feeding the dog people in the new apartment? I don't. No? Yeah. Well, his, that's one thing is... Um, <clears throat> I think it's... He's not a goddamn monster, Jay. Kibbles and bits of victims. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, well, a cop asked him, he's like, uh, was there a fucking... Um, he's like, was there any... He's like, was there any cannibalism? He's like, I'm strictly a bacon and eggs guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe him. I believe he didn't eat these. I... All, all three meals? That's kind of weird. <laughs> That's crazy then how he adapts the name British Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, I guess without the cannibalism with the fucking aspect, head shit yeah. and just cutting things off. Yeah, we really need to file an appeal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> update these terms. Yeah. <laughs> In June of 1982, he's killing it at his job and he gets a promotion. Hell yeah! <laughs> and he works for the government. <laughs> he does, yeah. So he's a government employee this whole time. Don't trust your government. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, his next victim is a 27-year-old guy named Graham Allen. He, same thing. He'll fucking choke him. He'll drown him. This body requires, is taking a lot out of him, though. And he calls out of work to dismember this guy's body. Just got promoted, too, man. So yeah. you're fucking really shitting where you eat. <laughs> you're really cutting people's heads off where you eat. Maybe you know, the boss is rethinking this promotion. <laughs> Um, the next victim is, uh, June 26th, 1983. This guy, Stephen Sinclair, he brings Stephen back to his place to listen to Tommy. The who? Yeah. 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 The fucking, uh, pinball wizard yeah. and all that. With headphones or? Yes. So Steve, or yes, yeah, Stephen's got the fucking headphones on. That's so suspicious. See me. <laughs> <laughs> Feel, Feel me. me. <laughs> Touch me. <laughs> Heal me. Drown me. <laughs> <laughs> so while Steven's fucking jamming out to Tommy. Dude, that's like a fucking clear sign, isn't it? It's like, hey, listen to this music that only you can hear. Yeah. Enjoy it on your it's own. It's pretty slick. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, yeah. Jake, I could picture you wanting to die that way where you're getting to listen to your favorite jams. That would be pretty awesome. Like if I put on some pixies in your headphones oh, man. I, and I, I cut yeah. your feet off. This monkey would That's be That's probably how you would want to go. Yes, absolutely. I'd be like, where's my... Yeah. But dude, while fucking Steven's got the headphones on jamming the Tommy, fucking Dennis sneaks up behind him and he realized, like, the urge is coming over him and he says, oh, Steven, here I go again. 
and he chokes him to death. With the microphone cord, or the yeah. cord again? Yeah. Damn. It's a shame he wasn't listening to White Snake. <laughs> You are terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dude. So that's in January where he does this to this guy. He's just stuffing bodies in cabinets. He's putting them in these fucking bins. He's putting them in suitcases. So he's really running out of space here. Trash chute. Do they have those in London? I don't think so, dude. Dude, If he's putting them in suitcases, why isn't he taking the suitcase out and getting rid of it somewhere else? Because he wants them to stay with him. God damn. Yeah, the fucking of reeks in this place. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's all about the companions. The next month, <laughs> the next month, actually, it's within probably the next week or so, he writes a letter, letter to the landlord complaining about plumbing issues. The fucking balls what? on this Dude. guy. So whatever whatever he doesn't keep, he's trying to flush because he's running out of space. But he's like, somebody's got to do something about this, man. This is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so he writes a letter to the landlord um, about the plumbing. And the next day, a plumbing guy comes out. And he didn't expect this to happen so quickly because he's still got fucking Stephen Sinclair's body on his floor. While the plumbing guy's at the door, he doesn't know that a guy's body is on the floor behind him. Yeah. And Dennis Nielsen's like, uh, would you mind coming back uh, maybe tomorrow? So four days later, the guy's like, all right, well, I'll come back another day. I'm busy the next couple of days. Four days later, he comes back. The guy's trying to figure out the cause of the problem. So he goes next to the building and pushes aside this manhole and he looks down into this manhole and he sees the cause of the plumbing issues. There's fucking flesh down there? Dude, there's, there's, there's all kinds of fucking flesh. And at first he's like, this can't be what I think it is. And while he's like trying to make sense of like what he's seeing down uh, where he just uncovered this manhole, fucking Dennis and another neighbor come by to see if he found anything. He's like, yeah, I found this, and what do you think it is? And Dennis is like, uh, to me, it looks like somebody was flushing some KFC down the toilet. I don't remember eating no corn. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's like, I'm, I really believe that this is a fucking a hand down there. He sees an eyeball down there. Oh he's my like, God. the he's hand a, was fucking full. That well, I think the flesh had been burned off of it, had been boiled off of it, Jeez. but like the bones were there, dude. So it looked like that pink slime from Ghostbusters too. Probably. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. The next day, the guy comes back to like continue working on this, and at this point, he's like, "This has to be human remains." So he calls. The next day, he yeah he he calls his boss and he calls police. The police come, they look at it, and Dennis Nielsen's at work. So the police come in. When Dennis comes back, they bring him up to the apartment, and um, as soon as they walk in the apartment, they're like, "All right, this is clearly death here." Yeah, like what the fuck's going on? They the police know just by looking down in that hole that's human remains. Once they go to the apartment, they know it's his apartment. Yeah, that it's coming from. They're like. All right, dude, how many people is it? One or two? He's like, oh, it's actually 15 or 16. Oh, my God. He fucking straight up then yep. he admits yep. it. Wow. How old is he at this point? This is 1983, so it would be He's almost 38. 40. Yeah. 38, yeah. And this is just after he got another promotion that he admits this? What did he get promoted to, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> don't make me do it, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> Female body inspector. <laughs> <laughs> so they bust him and he's starting to go into the detail about like the kind of shit he would do immediately he starts singing immediately he's he's relieved he's relieved to talk to these cops okay. and he starts telling him piece by piece what he's done and he even gets into like talking about jerking off in the bodies and they're like would you also have sex with these bodies he's like no that would be too much the furthest he would go is to jerk off on the bodies and to dry hump them. Yeah, man, I'm not a creep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> consent and, is still consent. <laughs> dude, and one of the cops is like, dude, why would you jerk off on these bodies? He's like, that was my way of saying goodbye. Oh, my God. Like some people throw a rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I throw a load. I throw a rope. <laughs> Never go to the fucking airport to drop that guy off. <laughs> February 11, 1983, he's charged with the murder of Stephen Sinclair. That's the first one. Because they're like, all right, we, we have 48 hours to do something with him. 
um, this is the one that we have the most of right now, although yeah. we're certain there's more. And there's like really fucking creepy footage where they'll show the police setting up a tent at his old residence on Melrose Avenue, and they're fucking digging in there, and it's the fucking middle of winter, and some of the cops talk about it being just cold as shit, so it's taking forever to get into the ground to find out what's there. While he's charged with the murder of uh, fucking uh, Stephen Sinclair, he's already being a little stinker in jail. He's refusing to wear the prison outfit. <laughs> he doesn't like it. He's like, yo, let me wear my clothes. I'm not wearing this fucking prison outfit. Oh, my God. They're like, that's not how this works here. He becomes such a little stinker about this fucking outfit, and he refuses to wear it, that he just st- stays in his cell naked all day. He's like, I'm not putting that on. <laughs> so he earns himself time in solitary confinement, and that lasts a while, but after he gets out of solitary confinement, he's like, fine, I'll wear the fucking jumpsuit. <laughs> Fuck. Was he naked in solitary the whole time? I don't know. I imagine it's got to, it's, it's fucking winter in England. Yeah. Like, at like, a certain point, it's like, dude. man. It's like a hunger protest, dude. You're going to fucking freeze. Yeah, put the fucking. Sorry, it's orange and it's not your color. <laughs> Dude, uh, by May 1983, he's charged with five counts of murder and two counts of attempted murder. So those two, the ones that got away, yes, ended up yeah. coming forward? Yeah. Huh. There was somebody pretty early on. This was in the late 70s. He had roped a kid into coming back to his apartment. The kid survived the encounter, and the kid uh, ran through. Um, once he came to, he immediately took off running and jumped out the fucking uh, window. How uh, many floors? No, this was the bottom floor. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't that far of a drop, but yeah, it was yeah. just, he, he ran Went through, through the fucking window, window yeah. and he escaped. Unfortunately, when they went to police, the kid's dad was like, there was zero chance he's testifying. Because the dad just didn't want it known that his son was engaging oh in God. like behavior which may have precipitated that. Yeah. And the cop, there's... um. It, there's a there's a great Netflix documentary on this called Memories of a Murderer. It came out in August and it's still on there now. So if you want to watch it, it's still up and it's really fucking good. The cop, uh, his name, the lead detective on this case was Stephen McCusker, although he might not have been the one that's talking about this particular instance. But whichever cop it was that's talking about this instance was like telling the father, like, look, if we don't prosecute him for this, he's certainly going to do this to another child. And the dad's like, I don't care. We're done with this. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, so it could have been somewhat nipped in the bud in the 70s. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately. It's like, dog, you were British. That means you're inherently gay, dude. Like, <laughs> fucking <laughs> chill out. Yeah, well, that, goddamn did, that didn't gay. work. <laughs> At first, he enters a guilty plea to all the counts, but then he gets a new lawyer, and the new lawyer is like, dude, I think you can beat this. Whoa. So the lawyer convinces him to enter a plea of uh, diminished responsibility. Which is just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know that I'm cutting people's heads off. I know that I'm putting Tommy on the record player. <laughs> but I don't know that feet don't go in the toilet. Yeah. Fucking the voice of Roger Daltrey just makes me black out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your Honor, my client is deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, he plays a pinball machine. <laughs> November 3rd, 1983, is found guilty of all counts. And he's sentenced to life with a minimum of 25 years. Which seems kind of weird that like he would have a chance of getting out after twenty five years. Yeah. But by the next year, they make it so that all right, like he's got life. There's no chance of him ever fucking getting out. While he's in jail, the next month, December of nineteen eighty three, an inmate named Albert Moffat slices him from fucking ear to his mouth and gives him a pretty badass Joker scar. Whoa. Yeah, pretty neat. Wow. Do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't suck a guy's dick. <laughs> I fucked 10 dead guys. <laughs> <laughs> While he's in jail, he keeps himself busy. Uh, he's a musician, so he gets a keyboard. He's playing music all day long. He's translating books to Braille for the blind. Whoa. Get this. He also has two parakeets in his cell. Is this guy fucking Tommy or what? <laughs> <laughs> Two parakeets? Where the fuck did they come from? <laughs> I don't know, man. How do you get parakeets? Better yet, <laughs> why do these parakeets don't know that they don't leave? They can leave. Yeah. Man, that did not come out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> he, he met the parrots in solitary confinement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they also refused to put on jumpsuits. 
Uh, all right, so May 10th. Wait, do British parakeets have an accent? I wonder. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> wow. We're we going to look that out. up. Yeah. yeah. He actually, he ends up dying in prison. He, um, he goes to May 10th. He ends up going to the infirmary because he's having like stomach cramps. Of what year? Fuck. I don't know. Jake, would you mind looking this up yeah, real quick? Yeah. It was, it was after a few years of being in there, right? I can't be certain, John. You know what? I think it was. I think he lived into the nineties and, um, Oh, I want to add this too while Jake's looking this up. He actually brought legal action against the prison <laughs> because they were withholding gay porn from him. Oh my God. What? This guy's a fucking genius. <laughs> he is pretty funny. <laughs> so, like, he was just like, look, there's uh, these other dudes, like, get fucking, uh, what was the name of the fucking, um, I can't think of the names of, of the magazines that he cited as being allowed of prison, but they Probably were something like, it's like we and fucking, gobblers or, well, they would allow, they would allow normal, like, straight porn. Yeah. So that was his argument. It's like, look, if they're getting pussy porn, yeah. why can't I get my bird porn? And yeah. is this... He, uh, he died. It was May 2018. What? Yeah. Okay. Jesus Whoa. Christ, man. So yeah, he lived fucking, a full life. Yeah. Dude, I, it was 2001 or 2003 where he filed uh, this suit against the prison for the gay porn. Because, dude, they would rip out all the hot shit from the magazines. Uh-huh. So he would just, like, get articles. And it's like, dude... <laughs> Stop. I'm gay, but I'm not that gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does magazine porn ever, like, did, does, I know Hustler was more risque than Playboy. Like, they would show yeah. more. But is um, printed porn ever have a wiener in it? Like, insertion and that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. So he's, he could get you pictures get of wieners. Wanted. Yeah. The like, yeah. best we could do is glamour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can get whatever you want. And to that point, uh, one of my favorite magazine porn stories was uh, when I was uh, when I was younger. I remember looking at one. There was this weird place called the Pipe Shop in 69th Street <laughs> by 69th <laughs> Street, and this the creepy old dude who ran it would let us go in there and just look at pornography. He just wanted some company. Yeah, <laughs> he just didn't want us to leave. He gave us bass and. Um, <laughs> there was this one magazine I opened up where it was a uh, a guy had his fucking his dick in a hot dog bun and was acting like he was about to put mustard on it. <laughs> oh my god! So this is the kind of shit they were withholding from Dennis. If I Nielsen. saw that as a teenager, I might have ended up gay. <laughs> I was like, damn! If gay sex is this funny, that's how I started smoking weed. I saw half baked. I was like, damn! If it's that funny, <laughs> damn! I didn't know you could put your wiener in a bun. <laughs> Dude, did I ever tell you about the first vagina I ever saw? Please tell me. Oh, man. So my uncle lived next door to our house, right? He was like this. How did he get one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he won it on prices Right. <laughs> yeah. So when he would leave, he would leave his front door open, right? And I knew that like, there was stuff in there. So one day, like, I was uh, scouting out waiting for him to leave. And the moment he pulled up the street, I like, went running over mm. just to see what was over there. And I opened up the first magazine... Uh, to like, to essentially it was I think it was a play it was a Playboy, and it was like a um like a centerfold. centerfold yeah. I unfold it and there's this girl she's like naked she's beautiful and then it gets to like her bush and it's shaved, to look like a beard, and she has a cigar sticking out of her oh p- vagina wow. and she has a tattoo of who I didn't know at the time but later found out through history lessons that was Fidel Castro. <gasps> Tattooed like right above her vagina. Oh my god! And it was that was the first one I ever saw, and I've been a communist ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. That's the first one I ever saw. Jake, if I saw that, I would have been Havana panic attack. <laughs> 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 Woo, man! I could close that thing. I'm like, do they all have faces? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the second one, you're like, wait yeah. a second. Yeah. yeah. They should put a disclaimer on those. Be like, look, if you're fucking eight and reading this, <laughs> this is not what they all look like. They're all a little bit unique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do we have to track that picture down? That has to yeah. be somewhere on the internet. It, it has to exist somewhere. I haven't, I haven't actually looked for it. I have to marry that it's woman. <laughs> So, Jake, did that result in a Cuban Missile Crisis in your shorts? (laughs) (laughs) 
let's just say there uh, there was a Bay of Pigs happen <laughs> <laughs> before he got back. Oh, oh man. Boy. You got any weird pussy stories, John? Oh, wait, can I just end this real quick? Yeah. Because, um, yeah, so yes, please <laughs> interrupt that question. <laughs> so on May 10th, uh, 2018, Jake, yeah. uh, he's having, Dennis Nielsen's having stomach cramps. So he goes to the infirmary and he ends up having an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And by the next day, he's dead. No shit. So aneurysm is like what happens in your brain as well. That can just kill you on the spot, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. An abdominal aortic aneurysm. Never yeah. heard of that. I have it pulled up here. Yeah, it says he had the aneurysm and they repaired it for him, hmm. but then he died a day later from a blood clot. Of a broken wow. heart. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were like trying to see if he was dead, so they put the dog up to his face. <laughs> Yeah, happy birthday in heaven, Dennis Nielsen. Now, could you imagine if we referred to Jeffrey Dahmer as the American Dennis Nielsen? Yeah, that would that be... would suck. And this country it's not would even worth it. Fucking man. go down the shitter. <laughs> it says he was cremated, and uh, the service was held only five mourners present, including three prison officers, two and, parakeets, and the in- individual <laughs> two parakeets. The individual with whom Nilsson had corresponded while in prison. Uh, no family was present at the service. Uh, and then they gave the ashes to his family. Probably his brother. Hmm. <laughs> For his mantle. Just dumped it on him while he's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, he said something so funny to one of the cops where he was describing how he would kill people. He's like, yeah, I would strangle him with a tie. And there was a tie right there. And he's like, all right, so we're going to take this as evidence. He's like, are there any other ties? He's like, yeah, I have one other one, but it's a clip-on. <laughs> do you think, what kind of knot do you think he tied, a foreign hand or a Windsor? Ooh, John. You seem like the kind of guy that knows a lot about knots. <laughs> Just those two. <laughs> <laughs> Windsor, you got to go Windsor. Windsor Castle, I don't know the he's, a, he's UK. Yeah, that would make sense. But Foreign hand is like skinnier. Windsor is like the fat. Trapezoidal looking one Okay yeah. I guess I know a couple knots here and there Yeah sure I know how to tie a tie But I, mine always looks like Leatherface So whatever that <laughs> one is <laughs> But what were you saying about your pussy? Um, I think I've I, f- I feel like I've said this somewhere before But like the, my first Porn that I could keep at home was like a ripped out pages of another magazine that I got from a friend, and it was just uh, pictures of a girl peeing into this like a big ass piss, like a like damn. Elephant. How much is she? Yeah, yeah, horse fucking giant piss. Just this hot chick looking at the camera pissing, and I was like, oh, I guess this is what I'm gonna beat off to <laughs> and be into for the rest of my life. Yeah, my, mine wasn't too weird. I think the first one I remember seeing was like it was like a it was a ripped out picture. Yeah. Of a pussy. And I took it. It was like me and my friends were just hanging out. And I think there was like magazines that everybody's looking at. So I took this picture. And I went right up to my room. And I hid in my closet. And I cracked the door open a little bit. And I'm just like trying to make sense of like what all this is. I'm like, this can't be it. Like, <laughs> this is. Yeah, you feel like a little nauseous. Like, is this what I'm supposed to? Yeah, can I? Where, what magazine would we get this out to? Because I would like to write to them. You sound like Dennis uh, Nielsen right now. I was a little disappointed, underwhelmed by this. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, well, yeah, I think he was bummed out that, like, he was known as, I was about to say the Puerto Rican Dahmer, the English, <laughs> <laughs> the English Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, when it was like, yeah, he should have been known as the OG Dennis the Menace. Ooh. Yeah. You know? You know, get all that fucking lame fucking 60s shit out of my face. Mr. Wilson. Yeah, Mr. Wilson can suck it, dude. Mr. Wilson's under my goddamn floorboards. Because <laughs> he was acting like a bitch. <laughs> you should be a crime beat consultant, man. That's a, oh, thank you. Yeah. They yeah, just I'm give you the details that. of a crime, and you have to come up with a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I got something. And uh, I know I put it on Instagram. So, so Yeah, and I sent it to you guys, too. But yesterday... I saw my buddy Zach Amico, yeah. who gave me a business card of John Wayne Gacy's that he yeah. bought for me. Now, about five weeks ago, I said on this program that I want nothing to do with any of that kind of shit. So this is your first actual memorabilia for murders? Uh, I want more. 
Oh, really? I, you got the Zapples? I got the Zapples, man. Oh, I loved man. it. I think part of it was like, I love Zach, and it was like a gift that I didn't expect. And mm-hmm. it was like, oh, man, th- like this is so sweet. Yeah, it came but from also, the right person. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, oh, this is also like very cool, and I think I like this stuff now. And is there like certificate of authenticity like you'd get there's like not an there's a very baseball. good ch- there's a very good chance it could be fake but it, i need a little magic in my life baby yeah. so yeah. yeah it looks like it's like aged you know what i mean it's not like somebody yeah. just fucking printed it mm-hmm. and sold it i hear you could bring them to any kfc and get a 10 percent discount <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a punch card yeah <laughs> so it starts with the business card. Mm-hmm. He mentioned something that <laughs> uh, a friend of his got, which was the banner that um, remember when fucking Ed Gein had his car sold at auction. There was a it was a carnival guy that bought it and mm-hmm. would like bring it from town to town to show people. It was like, behold, the butcher of Plainfield's death car. Uh huh. Well, Zach's friend has that banner Damn. that the car used to travel with. Wow. So now that I have like this little taste of what's out there, I'm uh-huh. like, all right. I'm probably going to end up buying some weird shit. And then <laughs> if I get too spooked out, I'll give it away. But I'm becoming a bigger creep than I ever could have imagined. Well, you're in the business for it. Thank you, man. <laughs> Dude, I feel so bad about Joe leaving the Jokers, man. Is there anything I can do for you? I mean, fucking, you know, submit my name if anybody ever comes asking. Mm-hmm. I could... I could fill those shoes. I know, you know you what could, I mean, man. And it's I think it's just a good reminder too to hold your current jokers close to your heart. Yeah. Cuz you never know when you're going to lose them. I don't think you're losing them though. I think he's just going away for a little bit and I'm pretty sure he's going to come back. Yeah, I think so. Do Once I'm oh, sorry. Uh do you think Joey Fatone's going to step up? He I mean it's his duty to. It would be right. You're like Joey, put down the wieners. Join the Jokers. Hey, get your fat ass out of Orlando at your fucking hot dog stand. <laughs> get your ass up here and suit up. <laughs> That's actually like on the sign at the, at the uh, Orlando Bureau of Tourism. <laughs> <laughs> get your fat ass out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of that hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> we got Joey. Joe, Joey Fatone could fill in. I don't know, man. I mean, are they even going to try to replace them, or is it going to be a three-man team for this interim period? I think it depends upon their interpretation of the severity. Like, if they're like, all right, he just needs to go through it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. We can fucking thug it out without him yeah. for a season. But if it seems like, all right, this is going to be a long-term thing, they might have to might have to look into getting a uh, new Joker. I'm sorry. I hope they fucking hold tryouts. Mm-hmm. That would really. Heath Ledger would have been a good for. <laughs> <laughs> I sure as hell hope they don't get that fucking singer from 30 Seconds to Mars. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Although I did find it funny when he was like sending Will Smith turds. <laughs> you remember that? Really? When he, yeah, got, yeah. when he got cast in Suicide Squad, he yeah. was sending him some weird shit. Yeah, like fucking pig's ears and like. Mm-hmm. Bloody shit. Mm -hmm. It's funny that he was sending it to Will Smith specifically, but if it was anybody else, I feel like that's just fucking corny. There was a note. He's like, I fuck Jada. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Anybody but Casey Jost. Really? I say Casey's a a good, uh, a man on the street kind of Behind the scenes guy. He's the guy who... They were doing for a little for like a season or two. I don't know if they're still doing. There's it. hundreds of episodes of Inside Practical Jokers. Yeah, they where they go inside the episode. Inside the episode is a 30 minute episode, and about 20 minutes in, this guy comes on who happens to be the brother of Colin Jost, uh, and he just interviews the Jokers mid uh, challenge and mid punishment, and usually post game like, how did feel to. You show your dong to a bunch of kids. Like, I know that wasn't one of them, but you know. What I mean. And then there's a little pop up video kind of facts on yeah. the screen that they show. You know what? Um, obviously, it has to be someone from Staten Island. So I might have to move um, for a year or two <laughs> to establish. It's like when you go to college, you like you need to prove that you live in this state. When you apply for the Jokers, you need to uh, approve uh, prove that you've been 
in Staten Island for over a year. I might have to Dennis Nielsen you and keep you in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> John, I feel like I, I mean, I think you have a great chance, but also you might get they might tell you, you know, they already have a they already have a Q. Yeah. Cuz Well, the he's the A. <laughs> I'm pulling for you, buddy. Questions and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate. It. I mean, I'll, I'll any kind of any positive energy I can get, I feel like will go a long way. So prayers up out there, guys. You know, pray for me, pray for Joe, pray for the whole squad. You know what? If you don't think John can do it, I would love to hear from you. And if if you have reasons why you think John would be a great impractical Joker, or reasons why you think John would not be a great impractical Joker, I think we should hear them. Yeah, yeah. And to if give you an honest assessment of where yeah, you're at right now. And yeah, if you're gonna, if you know, if you uh, if you say reasons why I sh- uh, why I could be good for you, if you say reasons why I can't be. Just send your name and address along with that complaint, and uh, <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Hashtag John for Jokers. Yeah, all right. Damn. Dude, I told, uh, right before we went on tonight, I was telling my son about this video I saw where a guy that was talked shit to on Xbox Live found out the guy's address of, the, of who was talking shit. Killed him? No. He went to his place and f- had his buddy film him socking him, <laughs> and my son was like, you can do that. <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> you just we can do that together. <laughs> Using the VR helmet right now, just yeah. swinging and yeah. <laughs> swinging at the neighbor's kid. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, this was fun. I'm glad we could do old, old uh, Dennis the Menace. Old Dennis Nielsen ratings, fuck ass <laughs> British ass. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these were Kindle books and uh, a Kobo book I, I used to reference tonight. But uh, anytime that I use an actual print copy of something. I'll make it known, and then I'll send it out to somebody who wants it. Cool. If you get like a lot of um, interest in it, you should do like a little raffle. You know what I mean? People we, submit their names, and then you just put them in a random randomizer. I, that's a great idea. However, Patreon is very weird about. I've read the, the rules. I actually wanted to talk to you guys about this. We can talk about it at, uh, off air, about, mm-hmm. but yeah, there's ways we can we can okay. do a raffle. Well, right. is that um, always? Is that uh, when it incorporates money? No, it could just be anything because there's um, something on Dad Meat. I had the picture that Shane had drawn of the wolf on the Uncle Daycare sketch. Mm-hmm. And when I put it up, I said, like, I'm just going to be picking. If you're interested, comment below. Yeah. And I'm going to write down all your names. And I put each name on a little piece of paper and I picked it out of a hat. Nice. And somebody was kind enough to say, like, look, you know, I've heard about this case where somebody did something similar on their Patreon and it got shut down. Okay. And then he sent me a link to, like, the Patreon fucking guidelines for having raffles and shit so yeah well i'll tell you what we could do we could start an instagram page for little stinkers perfect and then when you're ready to give a book away you take a picture of it put it up whoever wants it can comment put all those names in a randomizer that's that's how you get it i like it john yeah Yeah. you're an ideas man thanks mike thanks for teaching us about the great british boil off (laughs) (laughs) thank you the great british jerk off (laughs) I started getting into that show recently. Really? Yeah. It was just... My my wife had it on one time, and I was just like, all right, this is very soothing. Really? It's actually... voices. It, it's a nice palate cleanser after reading about murder all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to have, like, two <laughs> days of the week where, like, I'm just watching ASMR videos. You're just, yeah. you're just, just sitting with her dead body next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of holding your hand, I'm actually holding my wife by the throat. <laughs> Aren't you, like, starving by the end of those things, though? Anytime I watch cooking shows, I'm like, I'm fucking yeah. starving. Dude, right now, I'm having a real problem with my sugar intake. Ooh, I, cannot, sugar is... I cannot fucking stop consuming sugar. Damn. And I've, I've made New Year's resolutions centered upon eating better and getting more exercise. And I've set the wheels in motion. But right now, I feel like I have a fucking bloodlust for cookies. Damn. Cookies is what you're on right now? Mostly cookies. Um, dude, in the front, in the passenger seat of my car right now is this carton of munchkins that I bought today. Damn. That's, there's like eight munchkins left. And when I bought it, there was probably 30. God is, damn. Is the door unlocked? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the one right on the driveway there? <laughs> Jake, I would love to see you fight a raccoon for the rest of those munchkins. <laughs> I walk home. My wife's like, where did you get those? I'm like, on the passenger side of my best friend's ride. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if anybody deserves a little TLC, it's you, Jake. <laughs> Who's your favorite TLC lady? Joe Gatto. <laughs> Damn, what if he joined TLC? <laughs> I 
think the default is left eye, right? Like that's you have Well, to I would go with her just because she burned Andre yeah. Risen's house down for cheating on her. Yeah. Is she the one that died in the plane crash? She did, yes. That was Aaliyah. Wait, I thought left eye died too. Well, left eye might have been in a car crash. Uh, okay. Car crash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, Aaliyah was in the plane crash. Um I feel like Chili was the hottest one, right? I think it's left eye because you know how I love bad bitches. Mm-hmm. So Chili might have been, I don't know, the more typically beautiful one. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like left eye, I like the idea of ladies probably murdering me. Yeah, wearing eye black and just fucking your shit up. Yeah, and having a, a wonky eye. <laughs> yeah, she used to wear the patch, right, all the time. I think it was just uh, the, the thing. eye black oh. under. Yeah, oh. it's fucked up too because I think that was, you know, out of respect for Andre Risen being a football player and wearing eye black. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, her her boyfriend at the time was a prominent receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. It was in the 90s in, like, yeah. TLC's heyday? Yeah, and Atlanta Falcons had just started to get good again, and he was a big reason why. Mm-hmm. And when she found out, she burned his fucking house down. Fucking truly a bad bitch. Love wow. her, yeah. yeah. God damn. Let's see fucking t Boz doing that. <laughs> t Boz isn't burning shit but dinner. <laughs> that was mean. I'm sorry, t Boz. You didn't deserve that. <laughs> She was a bad bitch in the movie Belly, though. I never saw Belly. Oh, really, Ooh. dude? That was at the height of my wigger phase. Yeah, I, I, I would never have saw Belly. You that's and like, Marvel. Actually, I should that's say like the hi- wigger Godfather. It is. <laughs> <I'd>, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen Belly. I know DMX is in it, but I've DMX, never seen DMX, uh, Clifford Smith, aka Method Man, I've fucking Nas, obviously, yeah. Nas, obviously, uh, <laughs> T. Boz, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to watch that together. Dude, the beginning is like classic. Don't it. It's just like classic wigger, uh, fucking like uh, canon, I guess. Oh, Would, yeah. man. Like it's like, please don't run. I really want to watch. But the this. song that they play also is like anytime I hear it, I'm just brought back to that opening scene. It's a terrible movie, but <laughs> yeah. I rewatch it every year. I don't know why I didn't watch it because I feel like I watched everything other that was every other movie during that time period that was hip hop related. Did you watch the State Property movie? That was later. I okay. was, it wasn't really that into was post then. Yeah, yeah. My hardest, my my big phase lasted until I would say about ninety ninety eight ish. I started getting into corn, and that right. really fucking turned the tables for me. I feel like you can wear the same jeans. The jeans can <laughs> can stay. They can cross over from mm-hmm. wigger to a uh, new metal guy. Yeah, but like above the waist, transition. it's a different. That's a game. great point because above the waist in wiggerhood, I would normally wear a Tommy Hilfiger. Mm. But then when I made that's th- weird on a corn fan, right? When I made the switch to corn, I just started wearing t-shirts. Yeah, like band shirts and shit, like black t-shirts and okay, big ones and yeah, baggy. Yeah, sorry, baggy. Yeah, yeah. chain wallets. I never had the chain wallet, man. Oh, okay. man. You got the big wigger roast coming up. Yeah, I'm You ever submit that. pictures of yourself for this? I did not, dude. I think I only have one. Really? Yeah, when I was when uh, I was in my infancy. You knew I, it. You knew you didn't want pictures to, to be around. I was Because in your head, you knew you were wrong. No, I was just fat and didn't want pictures. <laughs> <laughs> just... Just if there was a way to like, I don't know, maybe Photoshop tits out of pictures back then, <laughs> I would have had more. But that was the only thing preventing me. Yeah, I can't wait for that. A lot of cool shit happening. You guys want to promote anything before you go? I don't think I have anything. No, no, I got nothing. Yeah, if uh, anybody listening uh, wants to come see me, Butterly, and Colm Terrell, we're doing a bunch of shows coming up in January and December. We're going to be in New York City. That Albany. ain't right. Huh? December was last year. Oh, my bad. In uh, January and February, we're going to be... Uh, January 20th, we'll be in New York City. January 21st, we'll be in Albany. And then the following month, we'll be in Baltimore, Boston, and... Fuck, where's the other place we're going to be? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Oh, fuck yeah. So if you go to my Instagram page, which is Mike Rainey, um, in my profile, you'll see the link tree with all the links for those things. So if you can make it out, I would love to see you guys. And I would love to talk murder with you. Hell yeah. yeah. That rules, dude. It's going to be so much fun yeah, for you guys. Wait. We're going to, um, I shouldn't say yet because it's not finalized, but some more cool shit Fuck coming yeah. along to that. Nice. All right, 2022 going to be a big year, Ooh, baby. I can't wait, man. I just, I'm having so much fun specifically doing this 
like everything is just I'm, I'm really like honestly I'm just grateful for my life hell yeah because like being able to do this with you guys every week is often the highlight of my week getting able being able to do dad meet with Tim and now being a, be able being able to go out and do live shows specifically for people that like both little stinkers and dad meat is the best game changer it is yeah it's i don't know it's for so many years it was just the days of like begging people to like you mm-hmm. and to like what you do yeah it sucks for so long yeah and just now it's you know it's just very nice to have people coming specifically to say hi and hang out and have fun yeah that rules very cool yeah yeah all right, guys. Thanks for joining us here on Little Sneakers. We'll be back again next week. And like I said, hit us up. Let John know why or why not he would make a good impractical joker. And um, and just remember to include your name, address, social security, mother's maiden name if you're uh, saying why I shouldn't. John, what would you do if they said Jake would be a better impractical joker? <laughs> I mean, we have I footage. Argue. I wouldn't argue. Of me being a little, uh, an impractical joker. What? Yeah, dubs, don't we? Jake, tell me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Can you throw yeah. over a little impractical joke? Oh, my God. When yeah. we went away for our L.A. murder trip last month, the very first video that we took was of Jake <laughs> at the airport. We there was The plane was fucking humongous. Yeah. And I dared Jake to go up to 20 people and say, that's a big bird, huh? Dude, and he okay, did yeah, it. You, said, you said, I'll bet you $20 you won't. And... Dude, I'm, I'm not even a fucking second of thought for Jake. He was like already on the third person. <laughs> and it's like it's a big burn, huh? I was like, I was so embarrassed, but laughing so hard. And Jake, I don't. And Jake is Jake just loves the game because yeah. he sent me my Venmo back. Oh yeah, absolutely. I do it for the love of the game, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, my money's on Jake. Dude. He yeah. should be the next Joker. Yeah, I got to step my shit up then. That was yeah. like when an athlete restructures their contract to go to the championship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go to the fucking American Terminal and ask what the cheapest flight is. <laughs> just get me to the gate, baby. <laughs> All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this morning. Look forward to coming back again next week. Love you guys. Later.